we're going to go over the next couple of weeks and talk about grace. Some of this stuff may be a, a little bit redundant from before. Bear with me because it's going to spring into what I want to share with you this week and next week before we go into the Pentecost season. Let's pray. Father, we bow into your presence. We ask you to move with might and power and touch every heart. Father, we ask that you minister to every person right where they are. And may they experience and understand your unfailing, amazing grace. In Jesus' name, and all of God's people said, Amen. 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 As I start this message, I have to share something from my heart that the Lord's been dealing with me about. Renee and I have been here a month in about two weeks. And then we've been senior pastors here for a year. I said a month. Uh, next month, a year. <laughs> and, and we've been pastoring for a year in July. And ever since that time, we've been striving to build a team. And we've been striving to be, get things done. And there's nothing wrong with that. And that's what we need to do. But I have to say that I feel in my spirit that I've overemphasized that and underemphasized God's grace. Grace is most important. Amen. Grace is most important. Let me say this before we get started. How many of you believe that you have to do something or that you have to do anything to earn God's favor, God's grace, God's forgiveness, God's ear, or God's blessings? In other words, do you have to pray more often? Do you have to go to church more often? Do you have to read your Bible more often for God to care about you or love you more? If so, this message is going to mess you up. Grace, unmerited favor. And unmerited means undeserved and unworthy of. For by grace have you been saved. Through faith. Mm -hmm. I am not worthy of it. I don't deserve it. I can't earn it. I can't pay for it. It is not mine. It came from God. And it's undeserved and we're unworthy of it. One of the things I teach about people being worthy is simply this. We're not. Right. We live in a society where a lot of churches are teaching people that they deserve God's grace. They deserve God's forgiveness and they deserve God's all of this stuff. We don't. If we did, it wouldn't be grace. Right. And therefore, every human ever born has the same merit before God at the foot of the cross. Every person has extended to them the same grace as any other human, regardless of their past, present, or future. I've said this before, and let me reiterate this. Justice is getting what one deserves. If I do something wrong and the penalty for that is five years in jail, justice says I go to jail for five years. Mercy is not getting what I deserve. If I deserve jail for five years for something I do, but the judge shows mercy, he gives me a suspended sentence or probation or two years. I'm not getting the full five years that I deserve. Grace, grace is getting what one does not deserve. Barabbas is a perfect example of receiving grace. Barabbas was a guilty murderer who was supposed to go to the cross between the two thieves and yet they released Jesus to take his place and guess what? Barabbas got to go free. 
If you do something and your punishment for justice is five years, grace says this, you're going to get five years, but the judge jumps off the bench, takes off his robe and goes to jail in your place and you go home. You could have shouted right there. Amen. Amen. Mm -hmm. Yep. <laughs> because Jesus Christ came off the throne of heaven, stripped himself of the glorious robe he wore, and went to a rugged cross and died so you didn't have to. Because the penalty for all humanity because of Adam and Eve was sin. The penalty was death because of sin. But guess what? We don't have to die right. because of grace. Amen. Because Jesus died on my, in my place. When Jesus hung on that cross, I hung on that cross. When Jesus hung on that cross, all of my lies hung on that cross. All of my stealing hung on, hung on that cross. All of my sin hung on that cross. And let me share something with you. I know in the Western world we like to put in category sin. And let me share something the Lord shared with me that, that it may cause you to question real deep. But I want you to hear me. Sin is not an act. It is a position. We were born into sin. Right. It's not something we do or don't do. It's who we are because of Adam and Eve. And there's only one remedy for sin and it's grace. And grace has a name and it's Jesus Christ. Amen. And before you and I can truly understand grace, we've got to truly understand God. Number one, God is just. Deuteronomy 32, 4, and Isaiah 30, 18, and there's some others. If you want copies of this, I'll give them to you. God is just. That means that when you do something against God, He's going to give you justice. In other words, if you deserve five years, He's going to give you five years. Because He's just. And He can't be anything but just. Not only is God just, God is righteous. Everything he does is perfect in rightness. Psalm eleven seventeen, Isaiah 45, 21, and many others. Not only is God righteous, but God is holy. Holy means spotless and without blemish and pure. Isaiah 5, 16, Isaiah 43, 15, 1 Peter 1, 16. And in 1 Peter it says we're to be holy as he is holy. And then in, not only is He holy, God is perfect. We can't comprehend that, but God is perfect. Leviticus 19.2 and Matthew 5.48 and there are others that tell us that God is perfect. And not only is God righteous and holy and perfect, but God requires that you and I be righteous and perfect and holy. Be holy as I am holy. Be ye therefore perfect as He is perfect. Guess what? How many in here are perfect? <laughs> let, let, me, let me let you in on a little secret. We can't be. We cannot be. So not only do we need to understand God, we need to understand humanity. Mankind. And I just put two up. I could have put a bunch up here. Number one, man is unrighteous. Romans 3.23, Romans 5.8, Isaiah 53.6, and Isaiah 64.6. Just a few, and there are many others. There is none righteous, no, not one. My righteousness is your righteousness. Mankind's righteousness before God is as filthy rags. Isaiah tells us. My very best. Back over there in Zechariah. Uh, Joshua is standing before the Lord and the devil standing at his right hand accusing him. And the Bible says that Joshua, who was the high priest, the most religious man on the planet, had on filthy garments. In other words, he couldn't stand before God on his own. There had to be something to stand in the place for him. That's what Jesus does for us. 
We are sinful. 1 John 1 8, Psalm 51 5, Ecclesiastes 7 20, and we are imperfect. We are imperfect. Man is imperfect, and we are absolutely incapable of keeping God's law. God is perfect, and He has a standard, and He has a law. And we are incapable of doing it. And I can hear the wheels turning in somebody's head saying, well, that's unfair. No, it's for your benefit.